Hello everybody. Today I thought I would talk to you about when we lived in Brazil and some of the differences of life in Brazil compared to life in the UK. The most obvious one, of course, is the weather. Obviously, it depends on which part of Brazil you live in. It doesn't really matter too much which part of the UK you live in because it's a lot smaller. Brazil is massive. And we lived in what the Brazilians call the interior. We lived in a city called Uberlândia and it's in the state of Minas Gerais. If you're not from Brazil, you probably know where São Paulo is and you might know where Brasilia is. And if you drew a line between the two, Uberlândia would be in the middle. Like the UK, there are a number of different accents, depending on which part of the country you come from. I'm actually Scottish. I don't know if you can tell by my accent. <laughs> no, I have lost my accent because we moved to near London when I was 11. I don't think I've lost it completely. I find it difficult to lose things like R and L. And so there are some words that people from around London might think sound the same as each other but are spelt different, like A-R-M-S and A-L-M-S. They would say arms and arms, whereas I'd say arms and alms. <laughs> anyway, in Brazil as well, there are different accents. And uh, I was at school with a girl from Rio de Janeiro. And then I had Portuguese lessons from my friend Karen, who's from Uberlândia. And when Karen heard that I was going to meet up with my friend Adila from Rio de Janeiro, or Gila, um, she said, oh no, she's going to really laugh at the interior accent I have taught you Portuguese in. And my other friend, who was in the class as well, said, why, are you teaching us with some kind of West Country accent? And when I told my friend Adila that, she said, yes, it is. It's exactly like a West Country accent. And it is. And it was so funny to hear Ben speaking Portuguese because he's from the West Country, he's from Bristol. And uh, you know, they talk about farmers and things like that, whereas London people would say a farmer. Um, anyway, um, when he was in Brazil, he would say, eu sou professor, <laughs> which is the miniaturized accent and also a West Country accent. Anyway, so different accents in Uberlandia, different accent from the coastal area, the littoral. Now there are some things that would be really surprising. So one of the first things we haven't quite grasped before we arrived was that the main meal is at lunchtime. Again, it probably depends on which part of Brazil you're from, but Brazilians in our area tended to eat the main meal at lunchtime. Quite early on, they would get up really early and start work at about seven and then they would break for lunch at about half 11, 12. I absolutely loved the food in Brazil. And a big difference between how people eat in Brazil and how people eat in the UK is we tend to have a fixed dish for a meal. So if I'm menu planning before I go shopping, I will think about what dish I'm gonna have on each night. So like Monday, I'm gonna have spaghetti bolognese, Tuesday, I'm gonna have chili con carne, I might have risotto with prawns on a Wednesday, um, you know, etc. I will work out what meals I'm going to do on each night and then make a shopping list. Whereas in Brazil, it's so easy. It's so easy. You just have every day rice and beans and then different meat dishes. You might have one or you might have two or three and then different vegetable dishes and different salads and it's great because you cook large quantities of things and Tupperware, <laughs> well Tupperware is a brand, but plastic containers with lids, so useful. And then you can batch cook things and you can have it buffet style and people can help themselves to what they want and how much they want. It's just so easy. I think I'm gonna do a whole video on foods in Brazil. I think that would be the best thing to do. It was very exciting. <laughs> but the differences as well, and things that I might have missed from the UK. 
Okay, so that was one difference, the food. Something that I missed about the UK was like the history of the culture. You don't appreciate how much history has gone into the creation of a place that you live until you go to somewhere that's relatively new in terms of you know, settlements and a history of people living in an area. Our city was the same age as this house that we're living in. So this house was built in 1890. I don't think Upralandia has even started being built in 1890 actually. I think it's younger than this house. So around here where I live, you can go for a walk, um, you can go through countryside, you can go along by the river. And what I hadn't appreciated is somebody established that footpath and the rights to going along that footpath. And these are the sorts of things we just take completely for granted. So in Brazil, we would say to people, where can we go for a walk? Where are our nice countryside areas? And people would say things like, oh, we've got lots of beautiful waterfalls. And we'd go, oh, where? How do you get to them? And they'd go, oh, you'd have to find a farmer that has one on his land, <laughs> or something like that. And you'd think, okay, is it not just a footpath? No. <laughs> So yeah, so that was a challenge. And one of the things that we did when we got back from Brazil was we joined the National Trust and we went to visit all these historic stately homes because that was just like something that we missed, just historic buildings and it sounds really boring, but when you don't have it at all and everything is brand new, it's just like oxygen. Something else that was very different was the layout of the houses. So in the UK, we've got carpets, floorboards. In Brazil, in the area of Brazil that we were in, everything was tiled. Everything kind of felt like a bathroom. <laughs> it was tiled on the floor and then the skirting boards. In the UK, we have wooden skirting boards around the edges of the floor and those were also tiled and it enabled you to wash the floor, clean the floor, by throwing a bucket of water over it and then getting a big squeegee and just scooping all the water up and in conveniently positioned places around your house, there would be little drains that you could push that water down. And then you had to be very careful to cover the drain up because we would get a visit from the dengue man <laughs> who would check that you didn't leave bowls of water out for your pets or plants sitting in water or any kind of water at all that mosquitoes could come and lay their eggs in and spread malaria and dengue fever. So a very different lifestyle. And we didn't really have a garden either. And at first I couldn't get used to that. Uh, everybody in the UK has a garden. If you live in a flat, you tend to put lots of pots of plants on your balcony or you have lots of pot plants in the house. We had a backyard and it was bricked. It's a black brick. No plants at all. <laughs> the first plant I bought was a little potted chilli plant and I put it on this little round table that we had in the house. And within a few minutes, there was a line of little tiny ants coming out of the electric plug socket and marching in a line up the legs of the table to this plant. And I thought, okay, <laughs> I'm beginning to understand why people don't have plants inside their house. We did have a thing called a winter garden. So there were glass sliding doors and you put all your plants in there and it was kind of open to the sky a bit. And again, there was like a little drain that we had to make sure we kept covered, but we could water the plants. And if it rained, uh, the water would go down the drain. And I learned a trick from a friend, a Brazilian friend that I went to visit to create the look of greenery. And it was to position plants. I got some wild orchids so they're kind of like cane-like but with little flowers on and I got troughs and I positioned them outside the windows, outside our bedroom window, outside the kitchen window and also hung a few ferns around in hanging baskets. Another thing about how houses are laid out is 
in relation to security issues. When we first arrived in Brazil, the economy was booming and lots of our friends were talking about how the crime rate had decreased and they felt a lot more secure. So when the economy had been bad, there would be a lot more robberies. Because people were finding it difficult to get work, they would probably be a bit more down. There would be more drink and drug issues, which again would cause crime and cause people not to feel safe. We were very fortunate in that we didn't experience firsthand any crime against us, but we did have close friends who had been mugged and robbed. And yeah, when life gets really difficult for people, you know, they do end up in crime situations. So yeah, it's sad that the economy in Brazil has gone down a bit again and the crime rate has gone up. We just really all need to look out for each other and we need to really work hard at social reform and so on. Anyway, that's a different topic. Because of that, people in our kind of situation where we're not struggling economically um, would have to be very careful and um, people tended to live in houses behind big iron gates and have electric fences around and that was something that was quite difficult to get used to coming from the UK and when I showed people pictures of our house for example on Google Street View they would go oh my goodness so a robber could just jump over that tiny little wall there and and you have no bars on your windows and I was thinking yeah it must seem really strange to people I mean we found it strange having to live behind iron bars it felt quite oppressive really Brazilians visiting our house the one that we lived in just loved it they thought it was a wonderful house and we had to be really careful that we expressed gratitude for this house because the person who owned it had let us have it for a rent that was a lot less than she would normally have got and other friends had kind of organized that and helped with that and helped to decorate it and so on so we were grateful but when we had friends from the uk visit they understood how we felt they would come in and they'd go gosh this is quite oppressive isn't it and it's because the houses in the UK don't have big iron gates, don't have big high walls around them, it's open, we have gardens and there was a, a sad little moment when Darcy was showing some friends from the UK around and she said this is the bit I really love just outside the back door of the kitchen there's a blue strip here <laughs> it was just that one strip of sky that we could see at that point because everything else was like covered over and big high walls so yeah for somebody from the uk who's used to living in open spaces that was a little bit different another big difference in lifestyle for me uh, was the way the women take care of themselves i think in the uk there are quite a lot of women who really take care of their appearance their makeup their hair do their nails but for me, and also my friend who moved to Goiânia, we didn't really bother that much before we went to Brazil. We might put a bit of makeup on each day, but not very much. And maybe got our hair done every now and then. Never did our nails. <laughs> I never did my nails. And um, yeah, I just generally kind of slouched about really. Tried to wear something smart for work. When we got to Brazil, and we might like go out with the ladies, go out with the girls. The sorts of things that they would wear would be things that we would wear for a wedding, like high heeled shoes, nice dresses. So that came as a bit of a shock. But needless to say, we got quite into it after a bit. And it was fun, fun looking after your appearance and fun putting makeup on every day and going and getting your nails done. And that was something that Darcy and I did as a mother daughter thing. We would go to the manicurist and get our nails done and have a chat with the manicurists, practice our Portuguese and have some mother and daughter time. And for quite a long time after we got back, I did keep doing my nails and I've got out of the habit of it. Every now and then I'd get back into the habit. I think I do take care of my nails better. I take more care of my cuticles and so on, but I don't always have nail varnish on anymore. Um, but yeah, it was good. It was good to feel like, yeah, I've really learned how to take care of my appearance. Anyway, that's some initial differences that I can think of. Yeah, let me know in the comments below 
what sort of things you'd like me to make videos about in relation to our time in Brazil compared to living in the UK. I'm definitely going to do one about food, but yeah, let me know anything else that you want a video on. Okay, see you next time. Bye.